If you were in a high school dance and you want to pull off the best prank, you get some of that spinal fluid and you release it in the fog machine. And then you just, you make the call for the Titans and everybody you don't like or that made fun of you or you do like and you just want them to live horrible lives turns the Titans. Yeah, boy. Harry 2.0. Uh, yeah. yep. uh, FBI agents. Uh, he yeah. is not uh, portraying our feelings. Uh, do not come okay. Opinions do not represent the entirety of Isakaya oh, Studios. Yeah, we're going to need to have a. <laughs> friend's going to need to add a disclaimer to the beginning of this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Welcome to Sasagayo Sunday. On this show, we're discussing the final season of Tekken Titan. I'm your host, David, and joining me today, we have Justin. Yo, yo. Next up, we have Ku. Hello, hello. Next up, we have Taylor. Hello. And finally, we have Sasha. But I had Todd. She's the wall. Sasagayo. Sasagayo. Thank you, Sasha. I had to carry on, on for Brian. So you can't be here with us this week. Yeah, um, he was here respect. in spirit. Yes. He, he was him, at a protest. Well. Bomb went off in a federal building and was unfortunately caught in the accident. So whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, you know, for for uh FBI purposes. Um let's not yes, uh anyone listening that was a joke. Was Sasha a joke. uh we do not associate with him when those type of statements are made, so please forgive him for his actions. Thank at you. the very, at I, least I actually great, him great off as hell mine. So <laughs> 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 So this episode, okay. uh, a lot of emotions running high with a lot of people. I, I mean, uh, actually, I was not mentioning the first part when um when Zeke was talking about how like his his stuff about his spinal fluids like like I don't remember anything of any of that part about how his spinal fluids like uh was it like it caught was it, dude, like, it basically like caused it lets him control people turn to titans because technically it's part of his body or whatever is that how it works. Yeah, so it's like one of his abilities as a Titan holder of royal blood. Oh, yeah, um, that's right. Okay. Where, mm -hmm. you know, any pure Eldian that comes in contact with it, basically that, like, is the same as them, like, injecting the spinal fluid, which we saw from, you know, earlier seasons in that transformation. Hmm. Okay, because there's also... So think of it this way. Oh, go ahead. If you were in a high school dance and you want to pull off the best prank, you get some of that spinal fluid and you release it in the fog machine. And then you just, you make the call for the Titans and everybody you don't like or that made fun of you or you do like and you just want them to live horrible lives turns the Titans. Yeah, boy. Harry 2.0. Uh, yeah, yep. uh, FBI agents. Uh, he yeah. is not uh, portraying okay. our feelings. Uh, do not come okay. um, Opinions do not represent the entirety of Isakaya Studio. Yeah, we're going to need to have a. <laughs> friend's going to need to add a disclaimer to the beginning of this. <laughs> yes. Because um, Hanji, oh, Hanji also mentioned too how um, Zeke told them before that it makes people freeze. Did they. I, again, I don't remember that part either. Like the part that where they thought was they, they where he was lying. Well, about she alluded. Say that yeah. in there kind of sloppily, or not maybe not sloppily. I can't remember how they introduced all that in the yeah. manga, but it hasn't been mentioned before. And it, like she said, I mean that's a lie. Like he's been basically breeding amongst them for some time. Okay, hmm. we just didn't know. We just yeah. we just found out, so it just feels a little bit like a very quick bait and switch. Yeah, because think about it. If if it was true, then the military officers we saw in the prior episodes drinking it, they would have frozen up right away, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So no, no, no. that would have given away his plan. Uh, what I meant more is that, like, when he said, when he told them that, like, yeah, I don't remember if that was part of the anime before or if I just missed that part, so. Oh, no, he literally just mentioned that at the beginning of the episode. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. That was him basically, yeah. like, alluding to what he, how he was able to do what he did. But he's obviously withholding, like, what is the true, like, range of that ability. That is just crazy, though. Like, I really never thought about how you could use spinal fluid. But, oh, my gosh, this just opens up a can of worms now. Well, I mean, does it? Because it, it's just for Zeke. Yeah, as far as as far as we know, like, that's something very unique mm, to indeed. Zeke. Indeed. Yeah. It's not like, oh, okay, you know, point. Armin can do this, or Aaron can do this, or whoever can do this. It's very much his own 
got a manifestation of this ability. Yeah. But it would bring the question of how did he learn that he could do that in the first place? I don't even know. He, let's just yeah, say I, he I had wondered some that the first time too. I was like, how? Yeah, he just like you know <laughs> taking <laughs> blood out of him or something. He's like, yo, drink this. Let me let me see what happens. I, 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 no, I, I read. One of Izayama's side stories. He had a like an extra panel online. What did Zeke just let out a fart and then like the room just <laughs> close? He was making out with this Marlian girl, and then he got a little too much saliva in her mouth, mm. and then all of a sudden like her pinky started transforming. Like <laughs> he's like, oh man, and that's why he's hated. That's why El- all Eldians are hated. That can't so. make sense. No girl would ever make out with him. So that that's oh, not what happened. Man. Oh wow! Whoa! Rude. Shots Rude. fired. <laughs> You heard it here I first. Thank you guys. God. <laughs> Not as much as Sasha hates Gabby and how much justice hey! you get this episode. It's from just, man, just like, I don't know. I don't know if she really like, understands like how much damage she's done. But of, co- like, of course she doesn't. I mean, this I episode wish, uh... is the full revelation of her finally seeing like how much she thought is like wrong and then how much her you know, actions really do kind of affect a wider range of people than she kind of thinks. Mm. The worst part is Goldilocks almost cut her up. She was like, ah! And I was like, yes, no, Goldilocks! Favorite girl, Sasha, stopped her. Uh, I know, Mikasa Uh, definitely lost some respect I thought that was funny, too, because then even Gabby was like, why'd you save me? And Mikasa's just like, "Mm." hmm. See, that's what her reactions. So I could do it myself. <laughs> and they just, bam, that's that. But nope. I would I, say, I though, um, Father Browse definitely gave, like, a really good, like, you know, speech towards, like, how he let Sasha, you know, go out into this world of this forest of whatever and, you know, explore kind of the the evils that this world has and how it really is kind of up to them as the adults of this world to stop this cycle of bloodshed. So mm. Let's be I totally honest, forgot worst, that moment. Worst father ever. <laughs> He's basically admitting he's a bad father and he let his child go to war, kill people, and then get herself killed. Like, I, I'm just I mean, joking. He, honestly, he but... learned this time, though. Now he takes in orphans, all right? <laughs> yeah, but I love how he's like, you know, she she always liked to go out into the woods and wander too far off. Yeah, uh, yes. I'm like, bro, where were you at as her dad? Like, you're <laughs> supposed to go look for your children, maybe like blow a whistle or something. Like, hey, we're here. We're here for you. But nope. Father Browse. Dude, like I'll... he's a good man. But I... Oh, go ahead, Tosh. I was just gonna say that that whole. Uh... Okay, so David, hopefully you heard the soundtrack in this episode because it was <laughs> woo, so that good. piano was in there. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I was definitely emotional, and I gotta say, my man Nicolo, I, I I admire this man. This man is just like honest, and you can just tell he's like, I cut you up, kids. You kill my love. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like gets that wide bottle. I was like, Nicolo, I probably do the same thing. I'm not even gonna lie. So uh that whole scene when he brings I'm gonna use their fake names, Ben and Mia back to the room to reveal them to uh Father Browse, worst father year award winner, three times in the year, three times in a uh, <laughs> consecutive. <laughs> I just man, the tension was so high and mm-hmm. I loved to use Justin's words, the facial reactions by Mappa. I, I give them some credit. That was phenomenally done. Like that whole scene, I was just on edge. I'm like, <gasps> they definitely got it down for sure. I don't know. Like I was, I was feeling so sketchy about Nic- Nicolo this whole episode. I was like, I'm like, like, what do you really like? Because I, I couldn't tell if he was really like if he because we knew the wine was sketchy in the first place. So I was thinking like, are you working for Zeke or are you because I are you somehow like a Marion like 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 implant from from like Peek and like and Reiner's side or what? So I was I was so iffy on what do you do? And then he was and then yeah, and then just the way he acted towards that wine towards towards like uh, John and and Connie was really suspicious mm-hmm. too. So. I was like, well, I think you were right to be confused, right? He's basically going through like an identity crisis. He even mentioned it in the thing when they were like, "What? So, what are you protecting us?" And he's like, "I don't even know, man." Yeah, he's like, "I have no idea what so, I'm doing anymore." He's really like, sketchy. "I'm just a tool." But then, but once he once he brought out like, or once I mean, he got pissed off about like Gabby and Falco, and then like brought them out. Then it's like, okay, now I know where he stands. So, but before that, like it was real. It was sense for me that like I just didn't know where where, where he stood, like like lo- loyalty wise. So. 
I think probably yeah. the best way to think of him is a Marleyan guy who fell in love with an Eldian woman who got murdered by a Marleyan soldier, and he's just figuring out what to do with that. <laughs> it's a lot to it's unpack, tough. for sure. It is. The ecologists feel for him. But um, most importantly, though, after, you know, this whole yeah. ordeal has taken place, we get the one, the only, the main leader of the Restoration oh, air in front God. himself. The picture. Flock. Oh, my God. Yes, please. Oh, yeah. Oh, Everybody God. needs to see this fucking the man, the myth, the legend that has smile. made the most this complete 180 smile, character. If you see, Stren, this <laughs> fucking archetype. smile on screen. God, I hate this so much. Oh yeah. man! Oh, if you hate this smile now. The memes are pouring in. I hate it so it gets much. My, it gets my parts moving. Fly, fly so high. Oh my this is God. the one time where, like, after an episode, I messaged Justin and I didn't say anything else about the episode <laughs> other than Flock's face, like LMAO. Yep. <laughs> See, Flock's legit. He has. <laughs> Go ahead. What yeah. What does he have? <laughs> Just what? what he he has. Did he open his mouth before he was ready? <laughs> And, no, no I, I thought David was going to jump in there, nah, so I didn't nah. want to cut him off. No, nah. um, but he has complete. This is how you do character redemption: you take a gun, you point at your former mates, and you let them know, "Ah, ha, ha, gotcha." <laughs> <laughs> so, Flock, you earn my respect, boy. You, you're in the good graces of uh, a Jaegerista here. So, Man, uh, well, now I can, I, I, I can understand like Taylor's like hatred for Flock. Is like, I, he really pissed me off that smile in this episode. I just want to, it was such a punchable face moment. Yeah, I don't Dude, really. I, my feelings towards him are complicated, man. Like going through and watching the show again, and like I don't remember why I hated you because I do support Aaron and I support you supporting Aaron. It comes down to when he was gonna choose Irwin over Armin. He was a little bitch about it. I just can't quite get over that. I'll never forget it. Yeah, I think it's just the greatest instance of like someone finally getting a little semblance of power okay. and just absoluting it. Let it go yeah. straight to their head and think that yeah. they're now untouchable. Yeah. yeah, and well, plus, like, just like, I mean, I know I understand it's for this character. It was, it's just like this whole mindset of like, oh, we're, we're, because he doesn't think, again, he doesn't think he's doing anything wrong, but just the mindset of like, like, we're, of how, um, what was it? Like, how we're part of the revolutionary and we're gonna, we're on the right path. It's just, it's so dangerous. And this, I really don't like, like, it's so dangerous when he keeps shouting the new Alien Empire slogan, like, this whole, like, like, it's just like, just another form of like, like the national that there's the supposedly they're fighting against Mar like you know Marley and even before that like just just the, the par paradise like puppet like government it's like you just we're just, just repeating the cycle all over again with the new Alien Empire slogan so no yeah. and Flock just she just represents that that other that that extreme mindset too so it's yeah just like, well, I mean I think I guess in this point too of like we remember Flock at his origins like the last time we saw too, him as yeah. you know non like chad flock if we even want to give him that credit which obviously we don't but um you know he was just going to be used whoa. as cannon fodder by by erwin you know they were just like hey man i need you to go die so levi can go you know fuck up the monkey <laughs> so i can i can understand you know why now when he gets like this little bit of power and he sees like aaron uh, doing stuff differently and you know they have all of the advantages it just kind of truly goes to his corgan of like he is the ultimate coward that only fights when he feels that you know everything is going in his favor mm -hmm. Ugh. Yeah, well he's, he's disgusting I would, please use your in, inside voice oh, dude, yeah, that, that that like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no uh you know i think this goes in line with this character though as much as i hated him in that original moment and now he's completely redeemed himself of course it is in line <laughs> with this idea that he he is someone okay who so <laughs> has okay. such extreme feelings towards one like he's a hundred percent on one side period there's no in between with him so mm -hmm. he was like dude i hate you armin i'm not, i'm gonna tell you straight to your face while everybody's mm -hmm. thanking you guys you are disgusting right and then later on he's like listen military police you guys are all idiots you guys are all taking your time we're gonna die if we wait any longer so now i'm on team aaron so i, I you know as much as it shows uh his his uh his willingness to be a coward. It also shows that he is sticking to his character traits, and it's not a, like a complete out of nowhere reversal for him. So yeah. I no. do respect Flock, and I think it's he just, should be a fearless leader. It's just a personal thing for me. It's like, yeah, it's just I he should know. be the one to eat Aaron. Let's be honest, guys. Oh god, it's like those people in life that 
consistently take the credits of others and act like they're the one that had like you know this huge involvement in like the resulting actions that's exactly like what it feels like 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 when uh, so, yes. like Sasha, when you mentioned how he looks things at like black and white and but like he wants that position of power i'm like i just like man that is so dangerous like that that's why he makes you more weary than anything like more than just like hey where he just makes you so weary that like a person like him would be in a position of power so like yeah, he's the guy, like, if he's on the opposing side, you absolutely hate him. But if he's on your side, you love him because you know he's willing to do anything to stick around on that side until, you know, you start losing. And then he leaves. Yeah. So, so, the so, first one so, yeah. so the fact that he's, he's like, he's, yeah. like, making himself seem like he's, like, uh, like the leader or he's, like, want to inform people of this new revolution just... Oh, yeah, it just... It makes me more worried than anything about how, like, how is this new, like, like group guys are, like, do well if Flock is, like, one of the leading people... But to Attack on Titan's credit, the fact that we've spent the last, like, what, five minutes talking about Flock, who we all thought was just a throwaway character at the beginning of the season, mm-hmm. amazing. Yeah. yeah, Really well done. Yeah. yeah. I think the anime is doing a good job of covering it, too. I feel like I wish I'd paid a little bit more attention to him when I was reading through it, because I kept on Damn. thinking, oh, you know, he's got this line here, and then he's going to, like, die, I don't know, next chapter or something, and it just kept not happening, but I wasn't really, like keeping in the information that he, of what he said or what he was doing. So the anime is doing a really good right. job of highlighting him correctly. Yeah, definitely. And then I just want to mention too, like also like right after like Flock shows up, like um, Armin just mentions, oh, like you remind me of someone I know. And then just Aaron just fucking pops out of nowhere. I was like, so like, I was like <laughs> spooked when that happened. Cause I was just watching Right, That's it. exactly the word yeah. I was thinking. Spooked. Uh, yeah, it's perfect. I was like, I was like, okay, I'm thinking of Aaron. And then like, he just like shows up like in the background all of a sudden. And I'm like, like, <laughs> it, took me, it, it took me a second to process this of what was going on. I was like, it, I was like, I had just such a like, brain delay when this happened. And then it did. I'm like, wait, what? What's going on here? And then like, yeah. So. No, they they did it so well. And again, you know, kudos to Matt Mappa because I want to say, you know, they kept it faithful to even how it is in the manga, but you can't really get the impact, I feel like, from, you know, a panel shot of that happening versus seeing it here animated and with kind of just the heaviness of both, you know, the background music or the things that are going on in that animation. Like, it just adds so much more weight and kind of like that brain lag of like, wait, what? Like, like, I, didn't, I didn't even, like, recognize was... him for a second. I was like, wait, wait, what just happened? Who are you? When did it happen? Like, that's it's how, so that's, nonchalant. That's how which makes I was. so great. Yo, we, yeah. I gotta give a shout out to our lord and savior, Aaron Yeager, because this man has always been hot-headed. He's just preaching, and, baby. Continue. And he you hasn't and, been the greatest Ulysses. fighter. Like, Dude, Ulysses, that's what's up. Ulysses, I got you, fam. And, uh, you know what? Like to give him complete credit, this season he's been a mastermind, right? Like he took it upon himself to go behind enemy lines and work with Zeke to conceive of this plan and put it into fruition. Also, he's the guy who fought the Warhammer Titan. Like I, obviously he got some help along with that, but he put him in the the jaw creatures or jaw titans mouth, drank the blood, and now he's back here and he's like, "Listen, I'm gonna be in this jail cell, but I can get out anytime I want." And then now. He's like, oh, I know Pixie said uh, that your side gave up and that you're willing to just let things happen as they may. But I know in reality, he's working behind the scenes to really, you know, subvert that, you know, common plan, if you will, or what's being publicly spoken. So Aaron is just like IQ level and his, everything he's picked up, it's showing. Like, I think what he's done now is pretty much equal to armin's strategy back in the day like you can see a lot of that has rubbed off on him and i think this man has the sense of urgency that's propelled him to become wow just amazing man bun aaron wow he's taken like the fighting skills of mikasa the genius strategy of armin and then obviously just his naturally amazing looks pixie's good looks so so i actually do agree with a lot of things you said (laughs) sasha but the one thing is like i'm still worried about zeke like it just feels like we're all just being played by Zeke and like his master plan. And so I just feel like there's a lot well, of things that we're hiding from that. That's being like that Zeke is just hiding from us. And so I'm very worried that how much everyone's trust putting their faith in Zeke. Well, and speaking of Zeke too, there was that scene. I can't remember exactly if it was the beginning scene or the middle scene, but when Levi was talking to Zeke and he was saying, 
Yeah, I understand your so-called rationale for everything, but he was like, I saw you murder all those people over in Gakko Village, oh, yeah, and you too. didn't give a shit. Like, that's you too. felt nothing. And I was like, yes. <laughs> Levi yeah. sees through this guy. Oh, no, that was an awesome interaction. Speaking of Levi, too, Even Zeke, just, yeah. there was, like, that one scene, too, where he had the flashback, like, oh, everything I did, like, every time I tried to help Aaron, my comrades died. I did this all because I thought Aaron was the whole of oh. humanity. And now, look what that yep. got me now. Like, what am, what am I even doing? Like, that, that was so, like, heavy. Well, I think it's... It's such a great part of, like, as much as Zeke is, like, a hateable character, like, he is so good at pushing Levi's buttons. Like, I think he was even saying, like, hey, like, I know you were probably, like, or, like, Zeke was kind of amazed that, like, Levi could be any semblance of popular based on kind of his, like, (laughs) attitude and rationality. Hey, he did hit that. Just putting him in his place. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. And Levi just being like, you know, yeah, I was popular enough. Like, I, I, you know, I got around. I, I did my thing. He's and only Zeke's the top like, of yeah. everyone's bondo list. I think everybody <laughs> do anything for Levi. <laughs> yeah. Which well, is so funny that Zeke is the one that too. just gets really under his skin. Yep. <laughs> um, but no, other than that, with, with the Aaron scene, the other thing that I think the anime here did really great was like, I think they showed like a little bit of Gabby and stuff and just like from what she just experienced, you know, prior with um, Sasha's father and everything and Nicolo to once Aaron walks into the room, she is she's scared terrified. of shitless. Yeah. She's like, shaking the whole time. Yeah. She shuts up and she <laughs> knows like, okay, I'm, I'm fucked. Like, yeah, Gabby, we're all that. I've energy, seen what this man does. That whole like Aaron, Good. you're about to kill him. We're all the energy go, Gabby. <laughs> yep. Well, to yeah. be fair, not Gabby. To, to be fair, she kind of just, came out of a pretty shocking development as well, right? Yeah. Yeah, that the devils aren't really, you know, right. devils as much as she thought it was. But I think this, I, I guess, more so would have be been better than the cherry on the top of just like, yeah, Gabby, what now? Mm. Where are you at? See, that's why Aaron should have come in and be like, hey, guys, I just want to talk. <laughs> that he gives her a high five, but breaks nah, her I think I think Aaron should have walked in, walked past both Armin and Mikasa to straight behind Gabby's seat and just picked up the chair and straight RKO'd her out of nowhere. <laughs> that w- that would have been amazing. Bom- just power bombed her. <laughs> and then walked out without saying anything to Armin or Mikasa and be like, let's go, Flock. And then they end the episode. What was the significance of him like showing his hand was cut or he was bleeding. Yeah, he was he could transform he could turn into oh, yeah. a titan yeah I'll at just, any second like any split yeah. second yeah that's like his go-to now it's like yo i want my trump card all right y'all i got my hand up i'm bleeding I think that my strong it's dist- hand. it was disturbing to me though because yeah. like <laughs> it was disturbing to me because we've never seen him have to do that like when meeting with his own previous comrades or something before you know what i that mean true like, too it, exactly it yep. really felt like almost like a declaration of war against them or something like it just feel it just feels so wrong and yeah know. against his two you know quote unquote best friends and it's just like okay see that like yeah, again, we're again, here again it's like it just it feels like he's just he's doing this like he's following zeke's plan but like how much can we really trust zeke like like I, i'm from where it's got like like back like uh what's the word not back at the backfire it's got backfire. backfire on him like later on like like maybe like maybe like that that zeke secretly wants to get like the founding titan from aaron for his own purposes whatever like i'm so like i i still have such trouble like yeah trusting zeke and all this i don't know to be fair well, i don't i don't feel like uh aaron is like blindly following zeke i feel like he's just using zeke to uh fill his own agenda yeah we yeah it's Ooh, gonna, it's be that too but I just yeah. feel like who like, has gone to the church of Aaron? <laughs> I just asked <laughs> I mean, the question of who's playing the highest form of dimensional but, chess. Is Zeke right. playing the five D chess or is Aaron? I just feel like like that Zeke has so much more information, uh, like that he knows more than Aaron. So I feel like he has he's more in position to be able to like to mo- maneuver around Aaron. So it just feels like if Aaron tries to do it, he's going to be at disadvantage. Well, the thing is, is like with with Aaron's development, he's always. I feel like he's just the guy that is just going to take like as much knowledge as he can from each person and just uses it to fulfill his own agenda, right? Like with Aaron and his technical prowess, uh, you got Mikasa for combat abilities. And, uh, you know, now that he's gained everything that he can from, from Paragus, uh, since Zeke is willing to just give up that offer for him, he's like, yeah, you know, maybe I'll use what Zeke has to offer and then like fulfill my own plan. Right. And with him having such a limited time left before he dies, since he's an attack Titan, He's just going to do whatever he can to fulfill his agenda before he dies. 
So I like all in all, I think Zeke's fooling everyone else, but I think Erwin's like the, the five head as of right now playing dimensional chess. So he's the biggest brain. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, I just thought about this. He has um oh or does he? Does he have his dad's memories? He does, right? Grisha's Aaron with his dad. Yeah. Yeah. He did. yeah. And who raised our boy Zeke until the age of like what five or six? So I think Aaron has some insight into Zeke that may not have been, you know, portrayed or depicted yet. Mm-hmm. But that just clicked for me. Like this man has some memories that he could definitely have some insight into, you know, how Zeke was as a child, what pushes his buttons, maybe something he could use against him. So mm-hmm. I'm definitely still team Aaron because I think this I man think. is just he's just too loyal, too loyal. And I, I think nobody else can see where he's going with this because right. He's always been the victim of these atrocities. And, you know, you got Levi questioning it. And, it, and it's this whole uh, idea. There's this author named Kurt Vonnegut who, who said, basically, if you want to uh, if you want to really build your main character, you got to put them to the worst possible situations to make an audience feel for them, right? Mm-hmm. And so I think this is, like, through Aaron's character arc, this is the part where we all doubt him and think, like, oh, my gosh, what a disgusting human being. He's betrayed his own people and his comrades, and he's threatening them at the table. And then there's going to come a revelation where we see, oh, wow. Okay, now I see this is all a means to a justified end. But, yeah, man. I mean, Yeager Easter the- for life. That's all I got to say. No, I mean, in the end, <laughs> I still, I do still support Aaron. It's just like, yeah. I'm just saying, like, I'm worried about him. Like, I'm worried about him, like, uh, like, just maybe, maybe, okay. maybe Zeke's is like, a stronger point than and then we're being that on. So that's what I'm just worried about Aaron. Mm. Well, we're going to see that rumble. That's all I'm hoping for. Yeah. I hope hopefully that very last episode is literally just a rumble starting. And then they're like movie coming out in five years. <laughs> God. Oh God. <laughs> Let's um, hope not, man. For anime yeah, only, that's going to be painful. The only thing I would really love to see some like numbers on like how many people pick up the manga and start reading the manga after the season ends before the next uh, movie. Because yeah. like, oh, it's totally going to depend on when this part one ends. How long part two is? If it's more than like I don't know, six months, people are probably going to start picking it up. Yeah, what was the especially because oh my god, I just uh, sorry, Sasha, I interrupted you, but just like really quick, on all of my all of my social media platforms that I follow, I haven't really looked up Attack on Titan stuff for quite a while, and I've been seeing like massive spoilers coming out oh, from like yeah, in those chapters. You gotta, it's tread bad. Yeah. yeah, like worse than I've ever seen it. Yeah, you guys have like oh. the worst fandom I've ever heard of. <laughs> to be honest, it's pretty not great. Yeah. So you guys just like, just like, just be really careful. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I'm so glad I have social media because fuck it. I don't you follow. I don't follow like a lot of other anime accounts besides the only one that really spoils me is Crunchyroll. So, but mm. I don't follow anyone else that really spoils. Yeah. So, anyway, sorry, I'm, I, live, I, I interrupted you, Sasha. <laughs> that that's okay. I was just gonna say I live in a bunker in the middle of a desert, and I have this like map pen that I give to random people to come find me. But I've just I've kind of vacated it because, you know, plot conveniences. Yes, mm-hmm. makes sense. Yes. Were you going to say something yeah. like what the gap was between like previous seasons for AOT? And well, like specifically or... season three, since it was two parter and it feels like this one's going to be a two parter. So season three, part two ended in July of 2019 and then season four started December 2020. Ah, uh, so it was the six months. In, yeah. in terms of between season three, part one and season three, part two. Uh, let's see. Season three part. Wait, wait. Right, go ahead. Is that a year and a half gap? Did you say December twenty twenty? Yeah, twenty twenty. So July twenty nineteen oh. to twenty twenty was season three part two to season four. That was the gap. Got it. In got terms it, got of it. Okay, season okay. three Never part mind. one to part two, uh, season three part one ended in October two thousand eighteen, and season three part two started in April twenty nineteen. So basically, yeah, it's just okay. what, two, six six months. Six months. Yeah. Why in October? That's weird. Should end in like, oh no, because of summer, yeah, summer season, and then yeah, season. Okay. July to October yeah, for okay. that first part of season three. So, I mean, realistically, if we go off history, we're looking at a six month wait. Oh, minimum. I mean, the history also includes like what a four to five year wait between. Oh, one yeah, and between, two? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's hope that we're not going into that. <laughs> 
As long yeah. as we get that Demon Slayer season two in, in between that, I got you, man. It's all good. I would say if anything, it's if it's over six months, and I would even say six months is being pretty generous for people yeah. not picking up the source material. I just think it's it like where like where we think it's gonna leave off. It just it, it's just it's such like a high octane, like lots of parts moving oh, period yeah. of time. Like if it if it does leave off where we think it's gonna leave off, like there's gonna be like details that you forget along the way and one major detail that you'll remember distinctly, but like you'll want to know exactly what happens next. Like it's just, I don't know. I'd be yeah. really curious to see the numbers for manga sales. Regardless on that. of where the season ends, it's definitely going to be like a, I want more and I want it now. <laughs> I'd assume it'd be a counterattack, right? When like uh, I'd say like Rhino shows up in his Titan form. And then, bam! That's that's when it's like this. I know it's so weird. To, I was I was gonna mention like how uh, this episode. I'm surprised we didn't see anything from like Peak or Reiner or like the Marley side. So, so mm-hmm. and that, yeah. and that oh, it's and coming. That, and that just got me thinking. Like, like man, how does that guy fit in? Like, are we? It's like the counterattack. Is is them attacking Paradise? Is that gonna be this season? Like, and then and then just like how they resolve that? And then how is like how is Paradise then gonna attack Marley after that. So that's that's what I'm just thinking. Especially since like we're near the if, end of the season. <laughs> if those will ever happen at all. Mm, indeed. Cause my lady Hizuru or whatever her name is, actually that's the name of the country. But I think she's gonna have her flying <laughs> bat wing thing and just start dropping bombs like ba-doo, ba-doo. Oh god, that helicopter I forgot. Yeah. Yeah, I'm telling you, that detail was just glanced over, but she she's that girl in the background who you're like, I don't really know you, I don't know you, and then bam, she pulls something out. Like you're just like, whoa, whoa. She's like uh that guy Plutarch from Hunger Games, where you're like, What are you just chilling at parties with watches and stuff? And he's like, I actually engineered the Hunger Games for the past 30 years. <laughs> you're like, All right, that's gonna be Kiyomi. And uh I'm not gonna I have no idea who you're talking about. I don't remember. I don't <laughs> Bro, saw the- I only saw the first. I only saw the first Hunger, Hunger Games. Games. Yeah, I didn't watch. Oh, uh, okay, never yeah. mind. Never mind. Uh, it, it was in. It was in the third one, man. Yeah, I didn't watch. Oh man, you know I, I ain't. I ain't got name. Nobody got time for that. I uh, just Bro, rewatched the Hunger Games series all over again, like two okay, weeks I, ago. So I was in my statement. Taylor's got time for <laughs> that. All right, thank, <laughs> thank you, Taylor. I appreciate that. I just got to rewatch yeah. Battle Royale instead. <laughs> Probably a better choice, honestly. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I don't have anything else. If, for this episode i think we covered a lot just three more episodes i I will say too like this like wow because i know like a lot of the paradise episodes were more like lore focused but this one was just such a more like intense like emotional like like setting so yeah i I really enjoyed this episode like so much so much like tension so much better than Gabby going and meeting people in the woods. That was terrible. So just <laughs> get that girl out of here. <laughs> I think you guys are going to really like the next episode. I'm excited for you to see it. I don't know. I, mean, I will say I more Goldilocks I action. All right. All right. Like so, so. <laughs> it's actually a full-blown Gabby flashback for the next episode. Oh, so. That would be the worst. <laughs> oh, shit. God. How Gabby got her groove back. Hey, yeah. No, it's Gabby. Get out of here. <laughs> no, Danny. Yeah. No. <laughs> uh yeah i don't know uh i will say this as someone who binged the first three seasons mm. i you definitely didn't like the the slower episodes the ones where they veer off with side characters you felt like oh this is a nice little break because i know it's going to be over quickly but now that i'm watching it on a weekly basis i'm like man i need to get that that last episode out of my taste out of my mouth because i'm tired of gabby get out of here <laughs> so so that part's been hard to deal with for this season but you guys can donate to my GoFundMe. It's called Gabby Recovery. <laughs> okay, man. I'll just come over and, and knock you into a coma until the series is ended. Then you can. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll just do that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's more, more sensical. Sensical? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yes. Mm. <laughs> on that note. Tentacle. <laughs> on that note. <laughs> I'm going to end it right here. So, I want to thank. <laughs> Thank everyone for watching. Thanks, guys. Appreciate your input this week. Thanks, and everyone. We'll see you next time. Bye. Ulysses, uh, love you, bro. Bye. If you're a bro. Woo! <laughs>